Is this little island in the Mediterranean Sea where the European Union falls apart? So warn Italy's political leaders. Closer to North Africa than the mainland, Lampedusa is just seven miles long. A tourist idyll and the key gateway for would-be migrants who seek Europe. Nearly 130,000 have arrived to Italy so far this year, double last year's number. At the port, we catch a ferry about to depart. Repurposed to transfer migrants, it's been taking hundreds of people off the island the past days, 370 today. Their boats loaded with them. Come here, Malal Merkab. I'm sorry, Shinsa. Yani, min imbara, yani. So those guys there are Egyptian lads from uh, Alexandria in the north of Egypt. Uh, they've been on the boat for 25 hours. They arrived yesterday. They set off through the night. Now they're going on this big commercial liner which is taking them off Lampedusa and they'll next go to uh, onwards to Sicily before being distributed throughout Italy. Last week, Lampedusa was overwhelmed with arrivals. <laughs> Residents distributed food and water Others protested that they're out of patience. In three days, 8,000 people arrived around the clock, more than the population of the island, and 20 times the capacity of the migrant centre. We take a trip to see it. We are the first international journalists to be let inside. It's managed by the Red Cross, and police have been drafted in from across Italy. We're told people are free to leave, but we don't see anyone do so. It feels like they've tidied up the place and thrown us a party. We try to speak to some of the migrants, but each time we're stopped from doing so. And they won't explain why. Stop. Please, stop. them outside. I will tell you. You are go away, yeah? Okay. It's impossible, guys. Outside, we join a briefing being held by the Red Cross. What's the Red Cross's message to politicians, to the EU? What are you calling for? Well, we, we, we are not making, making policy during these days. It's not uh, the job of, of the Red Cross. What we're doing here is to support people in need and to go beyond the numbers and considering each of them as a human being that needs help. But it's over capacity, so you need more help. The, the capacity of the centre is, is not the matter, the, 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 the real, uh, uh, as, well, the, the real uh, mechanism that uh, must work is this fact of the transfer very quickly. Through the fence, we managed to speak with Ahmed from Egypt. He's waiting to be transferred. How long did you spend on the boat? Three days. Was it difficult? Yeah. Hard? Yes. Why? It was hard because, you know, it was just hard. We're interrupted by two soldiers who Ahmed is quick to reassure. He's asking me how things are and I'm telling him everything's fine and we're being provided for and so on. I ask to talk with others, but Ahmed tells me they're too scared to speak. This tiny camp, no longer than 200 metres, has been thrust into the international political arena. After last week's surge, Italy's Giorgia Meloni visited the island with EU chief Ursula von der Leyen, announcing a 10-point plan, firm in language but light on detail. Meloni's government called the arrivals an invasion and an act of war, fiery language, but it seems to have brought attention and more resources. Meanwhile, the EU is preparing to transfer a billion euros to nearby autocratic Tunisia to bolster its economy and stop boats leaving. Cracks, however, have been exposed in European cooperation. The French government has now said it will refuse to take arrivals from Lampedusa. Back in town, locals are celebrating the annual festival for the island's patron saint, Madonna di Porto Salvo, Mary, protector of seafarers. Here we find the island's mayor, freshly returned from calling for aid at the United Nations in New York. The island has been living with this phenomenon for 30 years now, but to outsiders there is a perception that there's complete chaos here. Islands in collapse, islands under attack, this is not the case. I'm not the one who can decide a solution because I'm just the mayor of a small island. 
But we have to choose whether to treat people all the same or not, whether they are Ukrainians fleeing war or Africans fleeing war and persecution. Do we treat them all the same or do we treat them according to the color of their skin? Pulled between international forces so much greater than its size, what happens in Lampedusa will be determined by power brokers elsewhere. This doesn't feel like an island in crisis or doomed to it. Its people don't use the language of violence like Italy's political leaders. But they petition to confront the challenge, to find humane solutions so that locals who would offer seafarers protection aren't cast adrift.